This hot end has just a slight problem. From time to time, community members will send me boxes of parts that they're not currently using, so I can use them on projects or pass them on to somebody that might need them for their project. Well, I opened a box the other day, and in the bottom of it, I found this Slice Engineering Mosquito Hot End. As you can see, this hot end is a bit of a mess. This picture was actually taken after I tried to remove some of the PLA that was stuck to it already. I did contact the user that sent me these parts, and they said that this was from an overnight print blob. So something had failed and completely covered the hot end, and when he tried to clean it off, he ended up with what you see here. So this is a Mosquito hot end, a fairly high-end product. So I definitely wanted to try to save it and repair it so I could use it on a different project. But I really didn't know where to start. But if you're like me and anything that has PLA stuck to it, I like to take the torch to it first. So after a spirited round with the torch, this is what I ended up with. I actually held the torch on it so long that I started to blue some of the parts, and I cooked all the black anodized off the heat sink. But now it's kind of a gold copper color, and I think it kind of looks cool this way. You still have your laser cut emblems. So we got it cleaned up just a little bit, but we're going to need some spare parts to repair this thing. Mainly a new heat break. And if you've ever seen my interview from 2018 with Slice Engineering, that was one of the very first questions I had for Dan. Am I going to be able to get spare parts for this thing in case I break them? And here in 2020, it turns out, yes you can. So, so replacement parts, uh, and uh, we kind of went over that, but some replacements are, are somewhat standard nowadays, you know, cause for a lot of the hot ends and a lot of the different printer brands. Uh, what are you guys going to do about swapping out barrels and, and blocks and things like that? Right. So we did design it to be super robust uh, because we've separated that heat break from the structure. It's pretty robust, so we haven't had anybody break one yet. Um, I'm sure somebody will, will try, and, and we will be selling replacement parts at some point. Um, we don't have any in our catalog at this moment, but we're only four months off the ground, so um, this is actually only our second show. But uh, we will have replacement parts coming soon. So here's what I ended up with. I have the replacement heat break. I'll show you that here in a second. I got the hot block hardware set. That's all for the tubes and the screws to put it together. And I went ahead and got another set of wrenches because this really small one you have to use on the hot block is really hard to find. And just to show you that heat break a little bit further, it's nicely packaged. It's already assembled, ready to go right back on the Mosquito. We're also going to use some boron nitride paste when we assemble this. We're going to put it on the threads of the heat break as we thread it into the hot block. But I highly recommend you get some of this anyway, any hot end that you're assembling. Sometimes you'll get little packets with some of the hot end sets. This is much easier to use because it's in a syringe-like tube. So this video might be a bit on the shorter side because I think this repair is pretty straightforward. And I could have just done this and not done a video on it. But down the road, this might help somebody that needs to repair their mosquito or just someone that's interested in how this thing is assembled. So let's get into it. So this is the hot block hardware set, and any time that you take your Mosquito apart, I highly suggest you just go ahead and get one of these kits. They're not very expensive, and these screws are very specific screws. They're very tiny, and these already come with the thread lock on them, so that's going to be handy. You get the screws that hold the heater and the thermistor in, the screws that hold the hot block on, and the tubes that connect to the heatsink. And since this Mosquito has a damaged heat brake, I went ahead and ordered a new heat brake already assembled, ready to go. So using the smallest wrench from the kit, we're going to remove these two screws from the bottom of the heat block. This is a very specific wrench. I don't have very many this small, so order some extras if you need to from Slice Engineering. But we're just going to back out these two screws. They shouldn't be very tight. Those screws are out. So this whole thing is just setting on these four hollow tubes down here that we're going to replace. That's what keeps the separation in between the block and the heat sink. But this heat sink should just come off of here. It shouldn't be very tight at all. You can just wiggle it a bit and pull it right off there. Same way with these tubes. If they didn't come out with the heat sink, you should be able to just pull them out. So the tubes are off and I went ahead and took that heat break tube off of this because it was pretty badly broken. Now I'm going to heat this up a bit just to cook that PLA so it helps it unstick so we can back it out. You should be able to back this out with a 9mm wrench. Or in my case, I'm just going to use a couple sets of pliers because this thing's pretty gnarled already. So now that it's heated up with a little bit of convincing, you should be able to get that off of there. So we have our bare block. We'll let it cool down a second, but then we'll be ready to go back together. 
So with your new heat break, go ahead and put a little bit of this boron paste on the threads here, just on the thread portion. Try not to get a lot of this on your hands. It's probably not all that great for you. Our paste is on. That paste just gives you a little bit more thermal conductivity when you're transferring heat from the block to the break. The melt zone on this hot end is right in here. So we'll just thread this in. These brakes are very delicate, so be careful. Now Slice Engineering recommends that you torque these down to 4.5 Newton meters. And you can get a deep well 9 millimeter socket over this whole thing to torque it down, but I'm just going to tighten it up with a wrench. I recommend you use an ignition wrench because they're nice and flat, but just reasonably tight. Don't get crazy with it. I'm just going to hold it with some pliers, tighten it down a bit. Again, it doesn't need to be super tight, and remember this is copper. So it's a relatively soft material and you might strip it out. But that should be more than good enough. Just enough to keep it from backing out. And then we can put in our brand new tubes. Again, these just set in here. Just make sure they're all seated in there, they're all the same height and you should be okay there. And I don't think it matters too much which way the heat sink goes on, but we're going to put it back as they intend. So with your Slice Engineering logo here in the front, you want your Mosquito over here on this side, and your Made in the USA over here on this side. And we'll just slide it on. Mind your heat break up here at the top. It's just going to set in this little seat up here. And then we can put in our two new screws here. These are 1.4 millimeter screws, and they take a 1.27 millimeter wrench, just for reference. If you're reusing your screws, you definitely want to put some red Loctite, some permanent Loctite on them. The ones I got from Slice Engineering in the kit, already have some Loctite. We've got them both back in and we'll tighten them down a bit. I want to tighten them both down gradually so they're somewhat equal. And there's no reason to get those screws super tight. Just get them to a bit more than snug. And you should be all set. We'll go ahead and replace our heater screws while we're at it. One on this side and one on this side. And we're all fixed up, ready to go right back into action. And now all we need is a nozzle, and we can put that right back into our 3D printer and start enjoying all that Mosquito 3D printing goodness. Now, hopefully you don't need this video and your Mosquito always stays in good health. But if you do run into an instance where you need to make a repair, hopefully this video will help you out. And you've probably heard this a couple hundred times by now, but if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.